Well, glory to God. So glad you're here tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me, please, to the book of Mark, chapter 9. Mark 9, 23. Welcome to Healing is Now. Hallelujah. Healing is now. <laughs> Amen. Healing is now. This is our 11th one. This is my 10th. Leanne did one. So next month will be a year that we've been doing this. And I have no plans on slowing down. God has a lot to say about this area. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You remember the story of Jesus talking to this man. Jesus and the disciples had come down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And this man had a son who was possessed by an evil spirit. The disciples couldn't cast out the evil spirit. So Jesus... You know, the man said, if, if you can do anything, help us. And Jesus replied, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. What wonderful words from the lips of the master. If Jesus hadn't said that, I don't know if I would have believed it. But Jesus said it, so it must be true, right? All things are possible to him that believes. Now, last week sometime the Lord gave me this message and dealt with me for a few days on it and dealt with me about it today. So we're, we're going to do some things a little different tonight. Not a big different, but a little bit different. But as we're ministering, I'm just going to come along and I'm going to put my hand on your, on your shoulder or your head and just minister some anointing and some life and grace to you today. All right? Amen. Hallelujah. All things are possible to him that believes. All things are not possible to everyone. There's a select group of people that all things are possible for. It's only to those who, who believe. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You, can hear, you hear people say, I've heard people say this, well, you know, all things are possible. No. No, you just sliced and diced the scripture. <laughs> Not all things are possible. All things are possible only to those who believe. Amen. That's a big qualifier. Yes. Hallelujah. But faith makes all things possible. You may want to write that one down. Faith makes all things possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is healing night. And I want to talk to you a little bit about faith to receive healing. Faith to receive healing. Faith makes all things possible. What a statement. Amen. Faith makes all things possible. This should make you highly interested in faith. <laughs> to go from what's impossible to possible, I, I'm interested. I'm, all, I'm in for that. How about you? I want to know about faith. I'm highly interested in and getting rid of my impossibilities and making them possible. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are things about faith we have yet to learn. I am absolutely convinced about that. I know that deep inside me, it's a strong conviction, that as much faith teaching as we've had, there's things about faith we've yet to learn. And I believe, what I, I'm, I'm, well, I not believe, I sense in my spirit that God is yearning, He's eager to reveal more things to us about faith. I believe that. I don't think we've seen anything yet as far as a faith explosion. God is going to reveal more and more and more to His people in these last hours or these last moments about faith. Because this is the victory that overcometh the world is our faith. And I know that God doesn't want His people overcome, but He wants them overcoming. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our lifestyle has ratted us out. It has. Our lifestyle has ratted us out. We should be hungrier for faith now more than ever before. 
my son and I were talking, and we were in the truck driving, doing some things for the church, and we were talking about scriptures and faith and believing, and, and I said, well, you know, of course, I'm learning, growing like everybody else. I said, but one of the things that is in me is I'm going to keep believing until my experience comes up to match what I read in the Bible. Amen. I'm just going to keep believing until God shows me, reveals, trains me, teaches me, and gets me to where my experience matches the book of Acts and the rest of the Bible. Amen? I'm not, I'm not willing to settle back and go, well, we'll understand it better by and by. No, I want to understand it now. There's people who are hurting and dying, and they need us to understand now and give them the answer. Right? Hallelujah. Never leave the subject of faith. Never leave the subject of faith. And what I mean by that is, you, not that you can't study other subjects, but have one hand on faith at all times while you're studying the other subject. Never leave it. How many of you know that there's no such thing as having too much faith? Yeah. <laughs> just too much faith, too much faith. You know, um, my brother over here, he's just got too much faith. He's got more than enough to share with everybody else, so he needs to back off from reading his Bible. He shouldn't pray so much. He shouldn't be so in love with Jesus so much because, you know, he just got too much faith. Have you ever heard that one? There's no such thing as too much faith, is there? So we should be hungry for faith. We should be interested in it because there's more to come. Amen. The stronger your faith is, the less you struggle. I want you to think about that. I'm not saying that if the more faith you have, the less tests and trials you're going to have. I'm not saying that. But the less you're going to struggle. And you can tell when your faith is growing because things that, were, that seemed big are now looking smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. At one time, $100 would have choked my faith. I'm a little bit past $100 now. <laughs> I remember 17, 18 years of age. No, it had to be. I was a little bit older than that. I was doing a Bible study. And I'll never forget the first $100 bill anybody ever handed me. You thought I was walking on the moon. I just, I went nuts over this $100, man. I took my girlfriend out to McDonald's, and we had a big old time on that $100 bill. Hallelujah. But, you know, back then, $100 was a big deal, and 1000 was out of reach. But you can tell as your faith grows, certain numbers no longer phase you. Things that used to bother you and affect you and get you down and depressed, they're, they're just nothing anymore because your faith has come up. Amen. And so one of the things you can ask people is this, when they talk about, well, you know, you know it's, it's this amount of money or it's that or it's got... You ask them, say, is it really that hard or is it that your faith is not there? Hmm. Is it really that hard? Is it really that difficult for God or is it that your faith just isn't there yet? Because when your faith comes up, what used to seem big now, long, now it looks small. So the stronger you are in faith, the less you struggle. I'll take a big amen right there. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no limit to what you can learn. It's one of the things I like about being a human. God created us in His image, and there is literally no limit to what we can learn, and there is no limit to what we can receive. For all of eternity, we're going to be growing, developing, learning, reaching, doing, forever and ever. Spirit, soul, and body, we're just going to constantly be increasing. So there's no limit to what you can learn. There's no limit to what you can receive. Right? Amen. You know, I, I said just a moment ago about never leaving the subject of faith. Without faith, the Bible is just an intellectual exercise. And there was a season in my life the Lord had me, whatever I was reading, I had to have my, my bookmark in Mark eleven twenty three twenty four, And whatever I studied when I was finished, I had to read Mark eleven twenty three twenty four, 24, because God didn't want me leaving the subject of faith. He said, if all you do is exercise your brain and get information and, and not believe me for it, it's just a, an intellectual exercise. Amen. Hallelujah. So speaking about Mark 11, let's go there. Let's go to Mark eleven twenty two. 22. Through 24. We're going to talk about faith to receive healing. 
Thank God for Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. Amen? Amen. Thank God for these verses. I know you can quote them. Let's, let's read them anyway. You know the story. Jesus had cursed the fig tree. And Peter's all excited about it withering away. Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Yeah, hallelujah is right. Okay, we need, to, we need to get into this. No sinner is waiting on Jesus to save them. Would you agree with that? No sinner is waiting on Jesus to save them. If we had a sinner in the place tonight, and they came up and said, you know, I, I'm a sinner, and, and um, I'm thinking about getting saved but I'm not sure. And we said, well, come on, come on down here. We're going to pray. And, and if it's God's will to, to save you, you'll be saved. If it's not his will, then you won't be. We just have to wait and find out. We'd never do that. Why, don't, why doesn't a sinner have to wait to be saved? Because the provision's been made, right? Jesus has already been to Calvary, already purchased our, our salvation. So what we're doing is we tell the sinner, no, it's here, it's available just believe, receive, accept Jesus into your heart, repent of your sins, right? But we don't have to wait to be saved. No sinner is waiting on Jesus to save them. By the same token, no sick person is waiting on God to heal them. No sick person is waiting on God to heal them. Why? That's right, because by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. The provision has already been made, just like forgiveness of sins, the salvation. Our healing's already been purchased and provided. No one is waiting on God to heal them. No broke person is waiting on God to prosper them. Why? Because the provision has been made. Second Peter chapter 1 says all things that pertain to life and godliness has already been given to us. So... No one's waiting to be saved. No one's waiting to be healed. No one's waiting to prosper because the provision's there. And this is the thing that the church is stumbling over right now. Because carnal, natural people walk by sight. And you must believe it when you can't see it. This is the big issue. This is the big thing. Churches all across the world are stumbling over this point. If you're seeing it and feeling it, it's too late to believe it. I do not believe that you're here tonight. I do not believe I'm here tonight. I know we're here. Because faith by its very nature deals with the unseen realm. Once you can see it, once you can feel it, you don't need to believe it anymore. And you don't believe it anymore. You know it. Amen. Hmm. I don't need to believe God for a wife. I have one. Whenever manifestation happens, whenever it shows up, you're no longer believing for it. When you say to me, Phil, I'm believing for, what you're telling me is it hasn't showed up yet. It's still in the spirit realm. It hasn't showed up in the natural. When it shows up in the natural, you can call me and say, Phil, it's arrived. <laughs> but you're no longer believing for it. Amen. Right? Please listen to these words. In God's wisdom, he has decided that man receive what he has provided according to our faith. Waiting on God and waiting and waiting and waiting for him to do is nothing more than religious confusion. Because you can't have it unless he has provided it. But once he's provided it, 
We're not waiting on Him to give it to us. If there's a delay, it is in us receiving it. Do I need to do that again? In God's wisdom, He has decided that man receive what He has provided according to our faith. I, I, let me stop right there. Every, almost every single time when Jesus healed somebody, He said, according to your faith. He never one time said, according to God's will. He never one time said, according to God's power. But the church has changed it to say that. Church today preaches, well, we're going to be healed if it's His will. We're going to be healed according to His power. But Jesus never said that even one single time. Let's change it back to what Jesus said. The church changed it over here and millions are sick and millions are dying early. Let's take it and change it back to what Jesus said. Jesus said it's according to our faith. Why don't we go with what the master says? Now, if, if, he, if he had said it one time, it's according to God's power, okay, we need to back off on the faith. If at one time he said it's according to God's will, we need to back off on the faith. But he always put it on the person. He never said, watch this, I'm good. I'm the son of God. I got the power. Stand back, Peter, I got the power. He always placed the emphasis on faith. In God's wisdom, he has decided that man receive what he has provided according to our faith. Waiting on God and waiting and waiting to do it is nothing more than religious confusion. Because you can't have it unless he has provided it. Once he has provided it, we're not waiting on him to give it to us. If there is a delay, it is in us receiving it. Now this answers a lot of questions that, that Christians are asking today. Why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? We hear that all the time. Why is it taking so long? Here's a big reason. If you're waiting on God to do what he's already done, you're going to keep waiting. Nelson, please, 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 Nelson, please come into the sanctuary. Please, I beg you, please. Would you all pray that, that Nelson comes in the sanctuary? Yeah, he, he can't. He can't answer that because he's already here. And that's what people are doing. They're asking God to do what He's already done. Amen. It's going to be a long wait. <laughs> people have the faith that waits. Jesus taught the faith that takes. I don't know if I can. <laughs> it came up right out of here. It's not in my notes. <laughs> People have the faith that waits. Jesus taught about the faith that takes. Christians have been waiting on God to heal them for 20, 30 years. People have been waiting on God to prosper them 20, 30 years. They're going to wait another 20, 30 years. Nelson, please, please. Y'all pray. Let's, let's, call, get, let's get a prayer chain going. We have, for some reason, we think the more people pray, then God's really persuaded by them. Oh, if you, you missed it by 10. If you could just get 10 more people to pray, I would have answered that. <laughs> if we can get 10 more people to pray for Nelson to be in the sanctuary when he's already here, he's already done it. Yeah. Yeah. By him being here proves what his will is. And God's provision has revealed his decision. Amen. Amen. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. This is how you get a well body. You believe you receive. Amen. This is how you get out of debt. You believe you receive. Now that's not the only part. You got to work. It's not my, God's just not going to drop money out of heaven. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Deuteronomy 28 says that God will bless the work of your hand. All right, so there has to be some action, but we're emphasizing a certain part tonight. This is how you get direction for your life. You believe you receive. You have to believe you receive direction and wisdom when you pray, and then it shows up, but you believe you got the wisdom in your prayer closet.
Let me say it to you like this. Millions and millions of people think they are waiting on God. And the truth is, God is waiting on millions and millions of people. That's the church. Church is waiting on God. Waiting on God. Waiting on a move. Waiting on a move. Oh, God, if you could just come and wait. And God, just come. We're just waiting on you to heal us. We're waiting on you to do this. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. And the truth is, God's waiting on us. Amen. And it's a stalemate. And if God changed, he would no longer be perfect. He would no longer be God. So in his integrity, he's waiting on us. Amen. 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 How many of you would agree that we are to have faith like Jesus had faith? Because he's the pattern son in all things, right? So it's good not just to, I mean, it's good to, to learn what he said about faith, but also it's also good to study how he operated in faith because he's the pattern son. So we're to have faith like he had faith. And Jesus said... Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Jesus did not say, and this was me right here. This is what I did wrong. Been doing wrong for years. Jesus did not say, believe that one day you will have it. He didn't say, believe one day you will have it. Jesus did say, believe you receive them and you shall have them. It's a big difference. There's a big difference between believing that one day it's going to happen and believing I already received it when I prayed. The devil has worked overtime to confuse this area because he does not want us receiving. Because once we learn to receive, everything will change. Right? Look at this again. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Many Christians pray what they desire, but they do not believe they receive that desire. You got, you got three types of Christians. Christians who pray what they don't desire because they tell God how bad it is and what they don't want. Then you got Christians who pray what they desire and they just talk, keep talking to God about what they desire. Then you have a third group who believes they receive their desire when they pray. Right? Christians who believe in Mark eleven twenty two through 24 are in the minority. The, the vast part of the church does not teach this. They don't believe it. They teach opposite. They're against this. But I'm telling you, no preacher made this famous. This was around thousands of years before any preacher came along and preached it. These are Jesus' words. And people who believe in Mark 11, 23, 24 are in the minority. They are. Look at this. Please, Mark 11, 23. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that's number one, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith that's two. He shall, it, it, pardon me, he shall, I lost my place. <laughs> he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's three. Number four. Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray slash say. That's four. Four times Jesus mentioned, mentioned us saying something. Amen. Living by faith involves your mouth. Receiving your healing involves your mouth. 
How about that? Jesus mentioned believing in the heart twice. He mentioned saying four times. Where did he put the emphasis? On the heart and on the mouth, but he doubled on the mouth because if you're going to receive by faith, you're going to have to say something. There's no such thing as believing and not saying. Look at 2 Corinthians 4.13, please. Go, let's go back. Are we going to go back to Mark? No. Let's leave there. Go to 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. <clears throat> Jake and I were also talking about some of these areas, and there's this phrase, blab it, grab it. And if somebody would ask me, do you believe in blab it and grab it, I would have to ask them, define your terms. Do I believe in believing in my heart and say with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and getting saved? Yes, I do. Do I believe in meditating in the Word of God and speaking God's Word out of my mouth? Yes, I do. Do I believe in speaking the promises of God? Yes, I do. Do I believe that we have an inheritance in Christ Jesus? Yes, I do. And I believe the Holy Spirit reveals truth to us and where to speak those things. But to arbitrarily drive down the road and see a house and say, I claim that house, that's my house, is foolishness. It's lust of the flesh, it's covetousness, and it's taking the, the context of the scriptures and it's busting it to pieces. I was over at my brother and sister's house. Nice house. Uh, sister, you need to give me that table and chair set because that's mine now. I believe I receive it. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I have no right to, to blab and grab her stuff. That's, that belongs to them. But if God reveals to me a promise and says, Son, this is for you, then I have every right to believe it and speak it. Amen. Right? With every truth, you can take it to an extreme and do damage. But that doesn't do away with the, tr with the real. In 2 Corinthians 4.13... We having this same spirit of faith, according as it is written... I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. How about that? If you're full of faith, your mouth is going to be full. I don't know how to say it any plainer than that right there. If you are full of faith, your mouth is going to be full. If it's not coming out of your mouth, it's not in you. Your heart's not full yet. I love... Well, that's not true. I don't love, but it's interesting. It's a great analogy. Going to the gas station, putting the nozzle in, and when your tank fills up, it clicks and you get a, a splashback. Something comes out and gets on your hand. You can tell when it's full because the gas spits out of that mouth. And when your heart is full of the Word of God, it's going to come out. Some one country preacher once said it like this, when your bucket gets bumped, what sloshes out? <laughs> That's what you know was in there in abundance, right? <laughs> Here's what I, one of the things I want you to see. Your words are your faith. Your words are your faith. Listen to what and how you are speaking and you have located where your faith is at or how much unbelief you have. There's no such thing as faith that does not speak. Amen. And I know people are writing that down. I'm going to say that again. Your words are your faith. Listen to what and how you are speaking and you have located where your faith is at or how much unbelief you have. Our words locate us. They reveal to us, if we listen, to what's in our heart in abundance. Not just some of what's in there. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. That's powerful. So listen to what you're saying. Your words are your faith. I'm talking about faith to receive your healing. If you're going to receive your healing, you're going to have to have that healing in your mouth. You're going to have to believe that you received it past tense. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, please. Romans 10, 8 through 13.
the spirit of faith speaks. And when we have the spirit of faith, we speak. He said, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Romans 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Oh, let's do that again. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. What does nigh mean? Near. Near. The word is near thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Your salvation is as close as your mouth as close as your heart. That's how close your salvation is. And those of us who have received salvation, we can identify with that. We can say, absolutely. Your healing, your miracle, is as close as your mouth, as close as your heart. I'd say your healing and your miracle is pretty close. Amen. You can't get any closer than that, Right? Your prosperity is as close as your mouth, as close as your heart. Not knowing this, we look to others for what God wants to give us. Now, God uses people. We know that. But faith puts no pressure on people. And without knowing that it's so close that it's in my mouth and in my heart, we can look to people unjustly and put pressure on people to meet my needs When Jesus says, hey, I'm your Lord. I want to take care of you. Let me be your healer. Let me be your supplier. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot live victoriously in this life and doubt. Ouch. You cannot live victoriously in this life and doubt. But on the other hand, faith will cause you to outlast everybody else. (laughs) Glory to God. Thank you for taking good notes tonight. You cannot live victoriously in this life and doubt, and faith will cause you to outlast everybody else. Our final scripture tonight is Psalm 50, verse 23. I believe that I have received. (laughs) Please say that. I believe believe that I have received. received. Jesus said, if you believe you've received, you shall have them, right? Notice these words. I believe I have received. I didn't say I feel like I've received. It looks like I received. The doctor tells me I've received. My family tells me I've received. It's about believing that you received. Believing has nothing to do with sight. Right? Psalm 50, verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. How about that? You get your saying right, and you'll get your circumstances right. That's another way of saying, to him who orders his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. You get your saying right, you'll get your circumstances right. 
People just don't believe that words can be that powerful. They just don't believe that words have the power of life and death in them. But we know better. We know better. Somebody's going to listen to this message. And I know this is a word for somebody. The word of faith coming out of your mouth is your only hope of salvation when you are in an impossible situation. Many of you know that a year ago in August, the devil attacked my heart. And I'm not going to go through that whole story. And um, so the last few weeks or so, the Lord's really been emphasizing to me that my words are my faith. And I have been saying, I believe that I have received my healing. I believe that I have received my healing. Jacob and I went on almost a five-mile hike the other day, and my heart didn't beat, didn't skip a lick. It just, the whole time, just perfect. I'm, he doesn't know. He, he's now finding out about this. I'm, I'm confessing. I believe I received my healing. I believe I received my healing. The whole time, my heart didn't act up once. Hallelujah. Amen. Your words are your faith. You believe that you have received Amen? Amen. You know, Satan will tell you that it is too late to receive from God. But that's not true, because he's a liar. Amen. As long as you're breathing, it's never too late to receive from him, from God. Whatever you continually say, that is your faith speaking. Whatever you continually say, that is your faith speaking. Speak words of healing all the time. Not just when you're sick. Keep sickness far off you. Keep it far away from you. If you're always speaking healing over your body, sickness is going to get farther and 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 farther farther and farther away from you. That's what you want. You want sickness to be in another room. You want it to be away from you. So continually speak life and strength to your body, to your mind. I'm sharp, I'm bright, I'm alert. I'll never lose my mind. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So here's an extreme that we need to deal with. Never deny what is, but deny its right to stay. Never deny what is, but but deny its right to stay. True story, a lady came into church with a cast on her arm, and the minister came up to her and said, Oh, I see your arm's broken. She goes, No, my arm's not broke. (laughs) What? No, my arm's not broke. It's not broke. My, my, My arm's not broke. He said, well, I see it's in a cast. She said, no, it's not. (laughs) Faith doesn't deny what is. Faith just denies its right to stay there. And what she said was, my arm's not broke, my arm's not broke. She didn't say, I'm healed. She said, my arm's not broke. That's a lie. I don't think it's going to crumble and fall apart if you tell your spouse, you know what? I'm dealing with a cold. The devil's trying to put a cold on me. Say it once and then they're good. And you're good. And then spend the rest of your time declaring you're healed. You may be in a physical condition that's sick or weak. You don't deny it. That would be a lie. But you say, you know what? This this is passing. I am healed. Healing has overtaken my body. This has no right to stay in me. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Right? Does that make sense? You cannot control your thought life if you keep your mouth closed. That is, I have so learned this. I'm so thankful. You cannot control your thought life if you keep your mouth closed. Because you don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with words. Every time the devil shot Jesus a temptation, the Bible says, and Jesus said. didn't say Jesus thought. It said Jesus said. Whenever the devil hits you with a thought, you speak up and you speak back your faith to him. 
Hallelujah. You cannot control your thought life if you keep your mouth shut or closed. <laughs> Complacency and passivity are a couple of nice words for unbelief. It is. Complacent, passive. Why? It's unbelief. Because if you believed, you'd get after it. And that's what God did to me. I told Christian last week, I said, the Lord rebuked me, told me I wasn't using my faith. And I didn't try to argue because I knew he was right. I've been complacent. I've been passive. I believe that one day, we're all in the same battle. Hallelujah. But I'm doing better. As, As we close, let me leave you with one final thought. When you say, I believe that, you are defining who and what you are, And you're setting in motion your future. When you say the words, I believe that, you're defining who and what you are, and you're setting in motion your future. The words I believe are very powerful. And as I've been confessing, I believe that I have received my healing. The Holy Spirit had me slow down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you saying? I believe. That's powerful. And we're so quick to say, I believe, and then throw out stuff. I mean, if you believe that, that's fine. But stop and and listen to what you're saying. I believe. Wow. Be careful with what you're going to say after that. Right? Use those words, I believe, deliberately and not loosely. If you will give yourself just a three-second pause, you're going to be aiming and shooting, and you're going to release those words. You're going to release faith. I believe that. And make it stick. Don't be loose with those words. I believe that. Right? Right? Okay, I thought that was our last verse. The Lord wants me to give you one thing, one more thing. Mark 11, Mark 11, 24. <clears throat> Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive. I personally believe that the wording of the Bible is very important. And so here's what I was about to do. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. And the Holy Spirit corrected me. If you do with this what you want, this is just me. He said, stop saying you believe you're healed. I go, well, what's wrong with that? He said, say it like this. I believe I receive. I believe I've received my healing. Because you're going to put confidence in your ability to receive. And that's something we all need to come up in. We need to become confident in the fact that I can receive from God. And I'm skipping the receiving part when I I say, I believe I'm healed. Slow down. I believe I've received. Or if I'm praying, I believe I'm receiving my healing right now. It's happening to me right now. Right now, it's happening. I believe I'm receiving right now. If we skip the receiving, we can can get stuff, but our confidence in our receiving is going to stay low. Am am I making sense? Am I making myself clear on that? God is really helping me with this. Say it like Jesus said it. I believe I've received. I believe I've received. You will tell, you can tell in your spirit something's happening as you say that. Things are going to come up a little bit higher on the inside of you. I believe that I've received my healing. I believe that God, I'm saying it on purpose, I believe that God 
is looking for a generation of people that are really good at receiving from him. There's got to be a generation that's really good at receiving from him in order for everything that's been promised to come to pass. He's looking for some good receivers. People that are confident. Yes, God, you give that to me. I can believe that. I can receive that. I can lay hold on that. That will be here. That is mine. How many people have you met that are confident about receiving from God? How many people have you met that are not confident about receiving from God? The devil's worked overtime to obscure Mark 11, 23, 24. So there's nothing wrong with you having pain in your body and say, I believe I've received my healing. Because you're not saying, I feel healed. I look healed. You're saying, I believe I've received my healing. And that's faith. And faith deals with things that are not seen. Amen? Praise the Lord. Thank you for listening today. We appreciate it. Until next time, we gather around the good word of God. Remember these words. Be careful with I believe. (laughs) Praise the Lord.